We are in the midst of an overthrow of the deep state. So everyone should be talking about this, right? Why wouldn't the media want to talk about this? Why wouldn't this be announced? Why wouldn't you hear about it on the news? That's what we'd like to know. You're talking about multi-million dollar entertainment deals. And that is very suspicious. Sounds like they want a new definition of programming. What is really going on with the government shutdown? And most of all, where will it lead? We're talking about something really big here. We're talking about what we've been waiting for all this time. We could be going into some sort of emergency lockdown. This is edging us towards a catastrophe and it can't stay secret for very long. Get ready for episode three, the ultimate showdown with David Wilcock only on the edge of wonder. Edge of wonder. We, we talked a lot about um, some of those tweets uh, and then it kind of went through a bunch of different things. What, what else is there that you'd like to kind of let uh, the audience know about what's going on right now and the things that have been dropping? Okay, so another thing that I think is important was there was a personality who appeared on 4chan in May of the same year that QAnon came out. And she was going by the name of Mega Anon. I originally thought it was a man, and then she actually figured out how to get in touch with me and contact me. And I found out that it was a woman. Uh, she was very close to the president seemed like her involvement with him predated the election, but that she still had some kind of important role as far as security. She was very highly educated on what was really going on. She wrote a lot of stuff on 4chan. I covered this on my blog. And in my conversations with her, which again predated Q, and in fact my widespread publication of her was only a couple weeks before Q started, so I think it may have inspired the Alliance to see that information could be communicated this way anonymously and effectively. She was very excited about all of the human trafficking arrests that were being made and was telling me repeatedly how much she looked forward to when that announcement would finally reach the public and how much more of these rings were being exposed and defeated with all these covert operations going on. I believe that this announcement from the White House on December 31st, 2018 is the fulfillment of what she was looking forward to. So I wanna read you guys a little of this now, okay? So it says here, uh, National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month Presidential Proclamation. In February of 2017, I signed an executive order to dismantle transnational criminal organizations that traffic and exploit people. Now I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. At my direction, federal departments and agencies are ensuring full enforcement of our laws so that those who seek to exploit our people and break our laws receive the full measure of justice they deserve. Now this is the key part, guys, look at this. In 2017 alone, the Department of Justice secured convictions against more than 500 defendants in human trafficking cases. The Federal Bureau of Investigation dismantled more than 42 criminal enterprises, that's a whole big network, more than 42 criminal enterprises engaged in child sex trafficking. The Department of Homeland Security initiated more than 800 human trafficking cases, resulting in at least 1,000 500 arrests and 530 convictions. So guys, that is huge. We're talking about the Department of Justice, the FBI, and Homeland Security, three different agencies, 500 defendants in human trafficking cases with the DOJ, 42 enterprises, child sex trafficking enterprises busted by the FBI, and 1,500 arrests or more in more than 800 human trafficking cases for Homeland Security. So, so David, is anyone talking about this? Who's talking about this? Right, I mean, why do you have to hear this from the White House's own website? Wouldn't you think that the media would be excited about 
at the FBI busting 42 child sex trafficking rings, 42 different enterprises, it's the whole ring, okay? And then apart from that, the DOJ nails over 500 people, and then apart from that, Homeland Security nails over 1,500 people, and it's all this weird child sex trafficking stuff, which if you try to talk about this on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, dead and gone. So why wouldn't the media want to talk about this? Why wouldn't this be announced? Why wouldn't this be something that people get excited about? Why wouldn't you hear about it on the news? You've got to swallow that bitter pill. You've got to see, well, what the heck, you know, if people in the media are complicit in these crimes, then why would they want to expose what they themselves are up to? And that's the real red pill that people don't want to take right now, but it's there. Yeah, that's it, right? It's like they have an, they have an agenda, right? So whether the agenda is to hide what they're involved with or their agenda is, hey, I don't like Trump and I don't want to say anything positive about something that's gone on in his administration or whatever, I mean, that's not objective news reporting. Well, exactly. I mean, this is huge, right? Well, I mean, and what people have to understand, like for news, I mean, the, the object is you, you're objective. You take what this side is saying over here, you take what this side is over here, and you just present that information and let the people decide. But the media is working against the people. They're, they're completely working against they're working the people. against media well yeah I mean they're not even they're not it's like they're just become they're they're just becoming the official mouthpiece for the deep state really I mean if the deep state doesn't want them to report something they don't report something I mean guys think about this for a minute right you got somebody out there like Ronald Bernard okay and he's still talking uh, you should try to get him on your show you know he's he's still doing more videos but his classic one where he's speaking in I guess it's Dutch, uh, is, is the one that everybody's seen. He's personally admitting to his involvement in a satanic cult, which he didn't realize was all that serious until they wanted him involved in child sacrifice. Why don't you guys roll that clip? Because that's a very intense thing to see. But there was a moment when I was invited, that's why I tell this too om mee te gaan doen aan offers in het buitenland. Dat was het breekpunt. Kinderen. Oké. Okay. Dat werd je gevraagd. Ja, ik kon het niet. Wil je even, toen... even stoppen trouwens? Of... Nee. Okay. En toen begon ik langzaamaan eigenlijk in te storten. Ik had zelf als kind nogal wat meegemaakt. Ja. En dat raakte mij zo. Alles ging om. Yeah, sure. no, I felt will, so sure. bad watching that. Like when I saw him just breaking down on that interview where he's talking about it, I was like, man, this, like, not only why <sighs> aren't, isn't anyone seeing this, but it's like, it's, it's so real, right? Like everything in what he was saying was just so perfectly laid out about how it all works, you know? And here's the thing, guys. If the FBI alone has busted 42 enterprises, 42 different enterprises that are literally doing child sex trafficking. Any one of the stories of what the enterprise is, of what they were doing, of how they were doing it, of who was involved, of how the arrest went down, was it a SWAT team, did they have machine guns, did they have riot gear, did they break into a house, were there kids in, in handcuffs, were they crying, were they bloody, it's a story, it's a movie. And that's something that would get viewers. That is a big story. And then you tie it together with Ronald Bernard. If the media was really just interested in viewership, why wouldn't they go to the White House and say, could you guys set us up an interview with the FBI because you announced this thing? We'd love to know what, what are, give us like the five best stories that you've got 
out of these 42 child sex trafficking enterprises that you defeated just in that one year alone. We want to hear the wildest stories that's going to resonate with our viewers to give them a vision of hope. We want to interview the kids who survived if they're ready to talk. We want to put them on the news. We want to let people see how lucky these kids are that they survived. We want to talk to the heroes, talk to the FBI officers who made these arrests. Not an effing word. Nothing. Nothing. Gaping silence. Crickets. And that is very suspicious. Yeah. Completely. Completely. And it's, it's like, you know, we can obviously do that ourselves, and that's something that we would love to do. But at the same time, it's like, but, but, but it's like, as much, yeah, we, we would definitely do that. But it's like, why isn't the media doing this? This is like, it shouldn't just be us, a YouTube channel. I mean, this should be the mainstream media on television and everywhere, right? I mean, exactly what you said. They, they like the violent. They want sex and violence. I mean, it, yeah, this sells everything that they push, and yet they're silent on it. I mean, it's a perfect point. <laughs> Not to mention, I mean, just, just from a strictly business perspective, you're talking about multi-million dollar entertainment deals. You know, you, you could take the story of one example of a criminal enterprise being broken, you profile the FBI agent who did it, you get into his backstory, how he was fighting with his wife, his wife kicks him out, he's drinking himself to death, he finds this case, it's a case for him to redeem himself, he saves those kids, the kids are crying, he's got the kids in his arms, he's walking out, as the building's on fire because there was a bomb that went off inside as a safety by the traffickers, you know, and they killed themselves. He gets the kids out of the fire. That's a movie, man. That's a hundred million dollar movie. Why is nobody selling those movie rights? Why is nobody angling for those deals? Because you can't talk about it. They won't let you talk about it. It's going to be banned because they are complicit. Right, right. Are the people involved in Hollywood connected somehow. I mean, then these questions come up, right? I mean, right. I'm not saying they are because like, I don't have, I'm not saying that, but wow. it, I mean, th this raises these questions because if, if the things that are actually going to make money, I mean, what was that documentary we watched? Uh, you can only get it on Vimeo. It's called An Open Secret. Open, right? yeah, An Open Secret. David, have you seen? Should be required viewing. Pick on people who they know will be victims. You have an adult who is manipulating the child. Just getting you know, hired on the spot like that. That had never happened before. It was obvious that something was going on. For all y'all out there who have not seen an open secret, you can go and see that on Vimeo. Yeah, and right? only there because what happened was there was another one, another movie that came out also called An Open Secret that's on iTunes. The original one is not anymore. And they purposely tried to shut down. They, they tried to dumb down what was on the original Open yeah. Secret with this other one so that people wouldn't find it and watch it. But what's in that is so revealing. And it literally touches the very tip of an iceberg. And then just these questions come out. Like, I, I, I made my mom watch that documentary. And yeah. after it, she was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's right? It's mind blowing. We are in the midst of an overthrow of the deep state. And what I find really interesting with these new briefings that we've gotten, and I do want to make sure we get a lot of this in before we're concluding this taping, this is dense stuff to take in. It's, it's an overwhelming psychological load to reacquaint yourself with the truth. So there are briefings that are coming in which tell us some very interesting things. So there's a couple of Q tweets that I want to alert you guys to and that's the next thing. So let me just pull it up here real quick. I'm going to get it right off the Q site. I want to read these to you and flag two important Q posts before I discuss what the briefings are saying, okay? You know, and also real quick while you're looking for that, um, then, you know, what was so fascinating is the, the uh, it was the Emmys, right? That just happened. No, oh, the Golden Globes. No, the Golden Globes, yes. Yeah. The Fiji, the Fiji water, water girl. in the background, and then like they're giving the shots to the uh, you know everyone was freaking out like oh they're pushing this agenda of the uh, of the vaccines but we 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 looked at it and we're like whoa they're like getting a dose of their own medicine because it was like okay you guys here's all the like these famous actors and everything so let's just go out and give all of them administered all of them like these 
their uh, vaccine shots. Yeah, William Defoe looked like terrified. <laughs> yeah, because they couldn't say no. They had no choice but to do it. Because if they're like. like <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I haven't seen this. Are you saying that they actually vaccinated celebrities on the Golden Globes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You haven't seen this yet? Yeah. This so is gold, David. Th like. This is this is amazing. So first, first when all the actors show up, show up, they had this woman holding Fiji water like on a tray the yeah. entire time. And she's in, she's almost like photo bombing each photo. Every single photo of an actor. If you don't know what that means, recently in Fiji, they are, they arrested a huge, uh, what you're saying, like a, a huge thing of sex traffic, network, network yeah. of like sex trafficking and whatnot in Fiji. So everyone was saying this was, and this was also people are saying why they couldn't find a host because it looked like the Alliance kind of took over. So this woman with Fiji waters in the background with all these things, then in the middle of it, these, these uh, doctors came out and gave shots to, to all the actors who are attending this event. And then you had to put a white cloth on your head if you didn't want one of the vaccines. And, and, and they played the clip that says where you go one, you go Well, we so, go all, so, right? so during Jeff Bridges, they had like a tribute for Jeff Bridges. In the middle of it, they show White Squall, the movie, and they show the bell from the movie and it says where we go one, we go all. So all of us were just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like the Alliance totally took over the Golden Globes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so let's talk about that real quick, guys, which is the movie White Squall is one of the leads that they gave you in the Q stuff. Do you wonder, do you wonder, do you wonder, wonder? Remember I told you in our previous video that a lot of the Alliance is the Navy, that it's naval intelligence, it's the Marines. Uh, I forgot to mention last time that Army intelligence has been involved in this, Coast Guard has been involved in this, and some aspects of the Air Force as well. So they are not exempt from the Alliance, it's just that there's Overall, it seems like there's more trouble with the Air Force and the other branches. There's more trouble with certain federal agencies like the CIA than some of the other agencies. Um, but anyway, White Squall is this movie starring Jeff Bridges where he's the skipper and he brings these people together and they have this experience, these, these young men working on this ship. It's totally indicative of like, service in the Navy and there's this bell and they have this message on the bell that says where we go one we go all and that film is like and some some of your people probably already know this but I just want to put it on the record the whole entire Alliance operation seems to have been geared to a large degree to get you to watch this movie and I watched it with my wife about a month ago and this includes the fact right if because you guys have both seen the movie this white squall the namesake of the movie is that these guys are out there and they are you know dealing with various problems the boys end up going to port they are drinking they're having casual sex some of them have to get like a shot for some kind of venereal disease they got uh one of the boys dies um all of that becomes secondary to what happens where they are on the ship together and they get this really awful supernatural weather attack of this storm which literally just looks like a, a gigantic tidal wave is coming towards them and that's called the white squall. And then there's supposedly, oh that's a conspiracy theory, those things don't even happen, we don't even know if this is true. But the storm, the white squall, the storm hits the ship and it just wipes them out. People die. People get, you know, the ship is completely destroyed. And then there's a trial in which Jeff Bridges, as the skipper, is called to court. And they are trying to hold him responsible for all the losses, all the damage, the deaths. And what it really comes down to is, did he do the best he could? Was this an unavoidable thing? And so I believe whoever's running the Alliance, that this was a critical movie for them. Therefore, you have Trump, when they announced the beginning of the mass arrest operation, the mass sealed indictments, 
What does he say? It's the calm before the storm, the calm before the storm. Directly referring to that movie, the Q catchphrase, where we go one, we go all, directly referring to that movie. And they knew that the effect of this operation was going to be a storm, that there would be something that would happen that would basically challenge the whole country and the world like never before, just like that white squall does, and that there are going to be trials afterwards, and that there's going to be hearings, right? And then the question is going to be, did the Alliance do the right thing to protect the planet, to dismantle these human trafficking rings, to stop child sex trafficking, cannibalism, pedophilia, all this crazy stuff from happening? Did they do the right thing? Was this the right decision? And so, yes, that movie is critical. So now that you guys have told me this, you're literally saying, because this is the first I've ever heard this, that they played clips from that movie at the Golden Globes? Yeah, and they actually, they showed the part where on the bell where it said, where we go one, where we go all. Where we go one, we go all. Yeah. On. What was the context? Like, when did they show this? What you had originally said was yeah. Jeff Bridges had a... Um, there was a tribute to a Jeff tribute. Bridges, and they were showing various different movies that he was in, and that happened to be one of the clips that they showed. But when you put that together with the Fiji yeah. water and, and the, the vaccines, vaccines, that's when you're like, something is going on and here. I, and I'm sure there's a lot more that we just missed. I guess there was like an arc, arc way that represented something too, but you know, but this was just the things that we saw right away. And then on top of that, you have Trump recently tweeted out that thing that said, I forget what the context was, but he spelled Scott Free wrong and everyone oh, yeah. was making fun of him. But that movie was made by Scott Free Productions, which, which was the same spelling that, that Trump had. So it just goes along with like all of like really what's going on. And like you just said, the calm oh. before the storm. And, and just to make this point, I mean, he, he's purposely spelling things wrong. <laughs> yeah. When you look at what he spells wrong and the words that he uses and you go look them Bur up. Birder? Yeah, Bur birder. It like whatever. actually means something that people need to know about. And yeah. then everyone just thinks he's an idiot and he's really just telling people the truth through his tweets. That's great. So let me get this out about these two uh, specific Q posts, okay? So the first one uh, is from January 5th, 2019, where they are once again bringing up the Antifa flag, and they're showing that it is literally almost exactly the same as this flag from the 1933 paramilitary wing of the Communist Party of Germany, anti-fascistische action, and then the 2017 paramilitary wing of the Democratic Party of America, anti-fascist action same flags same words and this is apparently the deep state trying to do some sort of uh, weaponized left military resistance to the alliance trying to get people to actually pick up guns that they would be given and this is something the alliance is really worried about when they start to make announcements so anyway it says right here, January 5th, 2019, this is uh, post number 2645 on QAnon.pub. It says, complete blackout by the fake news media. Ask yourself why. Are they afraid of US patriots engaging in the same tactics? Did the liberal left old guard engage and form organizations such as Antifa to combat and silence fascism? Any such deviation from the controlled narrative? Do the actions of those patriots abroad destroy the fake news narrative where the majority agrees with the policies of the liberal left? And that's, of course, talking about the, the yellow jacket protests happening in France, right? Then they say, all in capital letters now, we will not go silent into the night. We will not go without a fight. Do you believe this movement and the worldwide events are simply a coincidence? Divided, you are weak. Together, you are strong. We, the people. We, the people, have the power. EO active. Where we go one, we go all. Now, EO active, EO is executive order. Now, that's very important because that's January 5th. The executive order that they appear to be referring to is the one that amended the court martial guidelines showing that as of January 1st, 2019, they could put these deep state traitors on secret tribunals 
and try them as if they were military people. So they said the executive order is active. But then we have another one that happened a lot more recently as the time of this taping. It's actually the second to most recent one that's available right now at the time we're doing this. January 13th, 2019. And it says right here uh, in post number 2672 on QAnon.pub, second line down below the link, it says, GJ testimony underway in several states. That's grand jury testimony. Those are the tribunals. The testimonies, the grand juries, the actual trials are underway in several states. And it says then, attempts to block slash protect themselves will fail. This goes far beyond political corruption and sedition. What is the law governing the removal of a sitting congressman or woman or a senator? Lights on, meaning everything's being exposed. So they're actually talking about, if you read this, it's saying congressmen, congresswomen, senators being exposed in tribunals happening now in multiple states, several states, grand jury testimony underway. So here's the thing. What is really going on with the government shutdown? Why has it been shut down for so long? This is edging us towards a catastrophe. It's, it's TSA workers not being able to get a paycheck and walking off, which already is starting to cause very serious lines and delays at major airports. If that goes on much longer, air travel would screech to a halt. Then you have prison guards prison guards who don't want to go to work because they are federal employees. They're not getting their checks. Even worse is you have people receiving benefits. You have people receiving food stamps, welfare, EBT cards. They're not getting their money. So this actually creates a very intense crisis in the country. Some people are not going to notice this as much. It doesn't affect them as much. But the point is what we're hearing and I want to make sure I get this on the record. The briefings are saying that they have started, they mean the Alliance, have started to reach out through various trusted people to multiple different alternative media outlets. So these various alternative media outlets, they could be YouTube guys like what you're doing or girls. They could be people writing articles, etc. But these people are starting to get insiders coming to them and give them leaks. And they're not doing this with just a few people. This is multiple leaks to multiple different parties. We don't really know exactly who's getting the leaks, but that Kim.com tweet that I showed you earlier says, get ready for a big data dump. And the intel that we're getting is that we could be going into some sort of emergency lockdown, which could be martial law, or it could just be a national emergency declaration, something like that. But it does appear that we are in the final stages before some sort of announcement gets made. It has something to do with the light being shined on. Remember what Kim.com said in his tweet. Deep state actors will be exposed. FBI, CIA, this kind of stuff will be exposed. Let me get back to those quotes again really quickly. He said, get ready for the next round of leaks. Monumental stuff. 2019 will reveal so much more. Department of Justice exposed. FBI exposed. Fake news exposed. We're talking about something really big here. We're talking about what we've been waiting for all this time. And it can't stay secret for very long. It's, they are trying to run these tribunals in secret. And their plan is that they might take as much as one or two years to run through everybody because they don't have enough staff to grab all of the people at once. That's a very important point. There's not enough personnel to go and, and snag people, unseal the indictments, bring them in for trial. So they have to kind of let things go slowly. And there's a part of the Alliance that wants it all to stay secret. They don't want this to leak out. They don't want this to go public. 
They think they can just kind of keep this quiet for one or two years. But there's another part of the alliance that absolutely is going to leak it out, and they're very concerned about those leaks. So I want to be clear, even if you hate Trump, even if you hate anything having to do with the government, the warning that we're getting is there could be the two-week disruption that we've all been hearing about for so long. You want to have two weeks worth of drinkable water. You want to have the ability to heat your house in case you don't have electricity. You want to have two weeks of food. And that really just comes down to a very cheap thing of going out and buying brown rice, millet, quinoa, which is grain similar to rice. Get different types of beans. You want to have some variety, but you can store the beans. You can soak them overnight and then boil them up. You can boil your grains and you can survive on that stuff. You're not going to have a lot of fun, but you get some spices, you get some extra virgin olive oil. This is what they're telling us we need to have. We need to have two weeks of feminine hygiene supplies, two weeks of toilet paper, two weeks of fuel, two weeks of drinkable water, two weeks of food. And I would highly, highly recommend that you take this seriously. I actually did it. I went out and I bought $150 worth of rice, millet, quinoa, garbanzo beans, pinto beans, lentils, mung beans. Uh, we got some oatmeal, you know, just to try to get some variety. I got a whole thing of salt just to make sure I have enough salt, a whole thing of olive oil. I got a whole big thing of ghee butter, you know, so I have that too. And, I, and we don't want to be foolish enough to assume that none of this stuff is true and get caught off guard because there is going to be some hardship in the short term. There's going to be a biting through. It could get to the point where we have those types of disruptions in our personal lives. Q has said they expect to keep the internet running. So the idea of a total internet shutdown, blackout, they apparently have countermeasures in place to avoid that from happening. So I just wanted to get that out before we say anything else. Stay tuned for more from the edge. From the edge. That, there's just so much there. <laughs> you just went over, but um, just keeping it kind of quick, because we want to move on definitely to hear what you're saying next. Um, this whole thing, what you're describing right now about you went out and you know saving two weeks of food and whatnot. First question is, why do you think there's some people in the Alliance that want to keep this under wraps? It seems that this would be a good thing to let more people know what's going on um, if these arrests happen. And the second question is, I guess, what would be the circumstances that this blackout would take place? Would this be like the Alliance doing something to arrest people, or would this be like the deep state retaliating in some way and doing this? It seems pretty unlikely. Let me just say this first. It seems pretty unlikely that there will be a power blackout on a mass level. That part of it, they seem to have compensated for. Um, one of the briefings that we got was that just like I had leaked previously, and I even talked about this with you guys, I believe, that, they, that the cabal had, the deep state had explosive charges that they planted in these bridges on the interstates that go over big chasms. So they could essentially decapitate the country. The governors of every state were told that this was used in case of foreign land evasion. So like if, if for some reason, tanks came in from an invading foreign power, they could blow these bridges and prevent them from getting any more inland. And so that's actually a typical war strategy, but the problem is they have these temperature and pressure gauges that technicians have put in there totally innocently where it looks at the barometric pressure, the amount of humidity inside the concrete holding up a bridge, allegedly to make sure that it doesn't crack and that it doesn't come apart. But what they don't know is that those devices have explosive charges in them and are run on GPS and can be remotely detonated. So not only is that the case, but there's a whole bunch of this kind of stuff that the deep state had created. They have, you know, low yield nuclear bombs that could be put underneath airports, put underneath power stations, put underneath water stations so that basically they could just wipe out all of our infrastructure. And so part of 
This coordinated military operation, the greatest coordinated military operation in human history, from what we're hearing, is that there are Alliance people ensuring the security of power plants, whether it's hydroelectric plants, whether it's nuclear power, whatever the type of power is, ensuring the security of airports, ensuring the security of sewage facilities, water facilities, the major power transformers, major power lines, the bridges. Of, so so they've, they've got all these people in place, very undercover, in plain clothes, with advanced systems where they have identified these various weapons that were going to be used. The weapons have been neutralized. The deep state will not be able to bring down the power grid, to bring down travel, to bring down communications, to bring down water, to bring down sanitation. Thank God they have thought this through far enough that they've got all those protections in place. So you better believe when they flip that switch, when they tell us the truth, when the announcements are made, there's so many countermeasures in place to prevent this thing from getting too bad. Now with that being said, no plan survives the battlefield. So there probably will be isolated disruptions. Somebody flies a drone in and, and the drone's got a bomb on it, or who the, who the heck knows what they're gonna do. But there probably will be some disruptions. Then they also are expecting armed resistance groups like Antifa that will start handing guns out to people, train them for 10 minutes on, you know, how to rack it, cock it, and shoot it, you know, and oh, there's the safety. And you can't, you know, you can't fire until you rack it once so you get a round in the chamber, all this kind of crap. They're expecting that there's gonna be some skirmishes, that there's gonna be armed conflicts with radicalized left. There's gonna be armed conflicts possibly with militia types if they don't really understand what's happening. Definitely some degree of armed conflict with deep state military, paramilitary, uh, you know, paid contractors, security guards, all this kind of stuff. So it could get a little rough. And we're not, again though, we're not expecting widespread power outages, but we are expecting that there could be a temporary hold on you know, being able to use major highways, major interstates, they may tell you that they want you to stay home. You may deal with a situation where air travel and highway travel is temporarily disrupted, which means disruption of goods and services, which means that people do panic buying at the grocery store, the shelves get emptied out of beans, rice, water, this kind of stuff. If you actually read the FEMA site on preparation, by the way, they actually recommend for the sake of simplicity that your number one best bet is canned food. Get all this variety of stuff that is in the can because then all you gotta do is crack open the can and eat it. You don't even need to cook it. As long as you have a can opener, you're good to go. I take this really seriously. The government shutdown is unprecedented. The silence over that announcement about human trafficking arrests and child trafficking arrests is, is unprecedented. Why wouldn't the media cover this? So I, I'm not saying to be afraid, but I'm saying you want to be prepared. Now to your second part of that question, why in the world would anybody in the Alliance not want us to know the truth? And this is the thing you guys need to understand. Everybody's dirty. The Alliance is not a bunch of white knights. They're not a bunch of Boy Scouts and angels. This is an uprising from within the deep state itself against the deep state. The deep state runs by making sure that no one ever gets into a position of authority unless they are blackmailable, unless they have dirt on them that would be so embarrassing that they would never want it to come up. And look at what they're doing with Trump. Trump is being attacked on every side, and yes, a lot of it is upsetting. And it drives me crazy when people online attack me for even mentioning that there could be anything positive about this administration, and there are a lot of them, because nobody is clean. Nobody is in a position to be like a Hollywood hero in an action movie. Everybody's got weird stuff. Everybody's got compromising information. Everybody's done things they regret. Everybody's done things they don't want people to know. And that's why a lot of these guys in the Alliance are really concerned. 
And so the key word here is clemency. We need to allow people to be heroes. We need to have heroes in the CIA. We need to have heroes who are Templars, heroes who are 33rd degree Masons, heroes who have been there in the room when the depopulation agenda was being discussed, heroes who were originally part of those plans, heroes who were involved in tasking weather control satellites to create earthquakes in vulnerable regions for specific purposes, heroes who were involved in domestic spying, heroes who aided and abetted paramilitary groups that conducted wet work assassinations on enemies of the deep state. You have to let people come forward. You have to let them be heroes. Why? Because now they're turning around their story. You look at somebody like Corey Good. you look at somebody like Pete Peterson, they've all done things that they don't want to talk about. They've all been involved in things they greatly regret. There isn't one insider I've ever spoken to who is clean. They were sick and tired of looking the other way at the evil that they were partaking in, the evil that they were forced to partake in. They do not want these things to go on. They do not want the deep state to continue to be in control. So even if you want to look at it, as I've said before, as warring factions that are negative, which is the only way some people are going to be able to handle this. We have taken you to the edge. Please watch your step. You got less negative and you got more negative. Less negative would be the kind of things that we're seeing Trump getting attacked for. But you're not seeing Trump getting attacked for pedophilia, cannibalism, human sacrifices, satanic rituals. You're not going to find a picture of him in a robe with black candles on a sacrificial altar holding a squiggly dagger, okay? That's not what he was doing. But you can't assume that just because Hollywood has tried to present this idea of the Lone Ranger and the Lone Ranger wears the white mask and the bad guy wears the black mask and it's really simple and it's really easy to understand. And this was so beautifully portrayed at the end of one of the classic Alliance films of all time the second Captain America film, Captain America the Winter Soldier. They go through the whole movie, they expose the deep state brilliantly. In the middle of the film, they talk about Project Paperclip, bringing Nazis over to the US, integrating them into our intelligence community, which in the movie they call Hydra, but it basically represents the deep state. And at the end, there are arrests. And at the end, you have people going on trial and nobody's clean, everybody's got dirt on them. But then what Scarlett Johansson's character says is, you still need us. You need the CIA, you need the FBI. You need us to keep you guys safe. You're not gonna put me in a prison. You're not gonna put any of us in a prison. You know why? Do enlighten us. Because you need us. Yes, the world is a vulnerable place. And yes, we help make it that way but we're also the ones best qualified to defend it. So if you want to arrest me, arrest me. You'll know where to find me. So there's a lot of cold feet. There's a lot of people in the Alliance who don't think anybody's gonna say what I just said or that that will be believed. We are in a society, and this is done by design. The deep state has made the public so reactive, right? There's so many things that you can't say anymore without getting in trouble. Even, you know, like when we were kids, the term Eskimo was just a term for people up there. Now saying Eskimo is considered racist. If you read Huffington Post, you have to say Inuit or Alaskan Native. There's so much of that kind of stuff, right? It's like, so many examples, I don't even want to get into them because just even saying what they are, people will be offended. I try to give this a similar scenario when people are talking is, 
uh, like people have this issue with Trump, and I'm like, there's a. I always tell people there's a, a big difference between someone who's running their mouth on Twitter because that's what they accuse him of all the time, and someone who is a playboy in his in his life as a young rich playboy, right? There's a big difference between the kinds of activities that go on with that and pedophilia and child sacrifice and all of these things. It's like if those things are going on. And we're so uptight about Trump. Why in the world aren't people looking at these crazier things, right? So what you were talking about is no one is clean, basically, right? Is a lot of times people are always they want to just jump and accuse people all the time of, of these things, right? Or or people have a everybody has a past. You said I think that you brilliantly said like we all have weird stuff, right? <laughs> like, like that's the quote of this episode. Basically, you can't look at what someone did in the past. Everyone deserves a chance to do something right, right now, because everything leading up to today was a big bag of cats. So, with that said, we have to look at what people are doing right now, what what people are saying right now, what actions someone can take to take a step towards undoing all of this crazy. If we don't do that, if we can't be open-minded enough to do that, then we as a society have a huge problem because everyone is. Is doomed. Sure, and bear in mind that this has happened before in history. There was an anti-Masonic revolt in the uh, late 1820s and early 1830s. And as I told you guys before in our previous episodes, which I've watched a bunch of times, I love it. You're doing a great job. Thank you guys. That I honor both of you and your team. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. I'm very happy to be doing this. So. When we see a book like *Light on Masonry* by David Bernard, as I said before, this is a book that was published during hearings that were taking place in state courtrooms in New York State in the 1830s, where you had Masons from all different degrees coming forward, sharing the actual written words of what they were doing as their oaths. These trials were about the idea that some. Dark and sinister group was using this society to infiltrate, to have the cloak of secrecy, to unfairly favor their own people who worked hard and should have gotten that job because they were more qualified. They were unfairly giving themselves an advantage. They were controlling the police, controlling the judiciary, controlling the military, controlling the media, controlling the government on the local level, regional level, state level, federal level, controlling corporations, controlling all aspects of society, it all came out. And in those trials in the 1830s, you had people who were very deeply involved on the wrong side of it originally who came forward and they became heroes because they spoke out on favor of the country and on favor of their own people. And so this is what we have to go through again. There's a lot of people in the alliance who are really concerned about this because it's going to be a feeding frenzy. When you see what happened with the Me Too movement, which apparently the alliance was behind that, I can tell you from being involved in showbiz that right now, if you want to try to get an entertainment deal, you have to be so clean. They don't want you to have a tweet that you said 20 years ago. That could be construed as damaging. They don't want you to have any any litigation going on in your life. They don't want you to have anything that could possibly cause trouble. They are so careful because it's such a mess, and there were so many people who were guilty. There's all these new rules and restrictions, even around things like filming. Like for example,、uh, they don't want you to. They don't want actors to actually. French kiss each other to use the tongue when they're kissing anymore. You know, just because they're so worried about sexual harassment and you know germs being spread and you know ethical questions about well this actor is married then why are they making out with this person in this movie? You know, they're trying to basically like you know cut down on the sex scenes almost entirely because of this kind of stuff. So we're in a different era here, and. The people in the alliance who want the truth to come out are not going to let this stay quiet. So it's a very significant point that we don't really know when or how this thing's going to unravel. We just know that it will, and we know that we are being told to imminently, immediately prepare 
for the need to have two weeks of food in your home. That is a, a very, very important point. Join us for the next episode where we talk about the Paradise Fires. We'll also discuss seismic events that occurred, weather control and manipulation, only on the edge of wonder. You know, we've got all of these, um, uh, hold, hold on. I forgot my point, actually, <laughs> as I was talking. It's okay. <laughs> it does happen.